All right, we're going to go through some basic mixing, EQ compression, and how to export your project and some other types of uh, exports and bounces. So the first thing we're going to do is automation. When you click on this icon or you hit the A key, automation appears. And it gives you some information as to what the automation will do. So right now it's going to read automation and we'll kind of go into a way that we can actually record automation what it is <coughs> you're automating and then it gives you the level or the number that is the automation is reading so we can do a basic volume automation so this will be like a a fade in or fade out right You can also adjust the overall level, so you don't have to use your fader now to adjust that. You can do it in your automation, and you can do it over time. Right, or maybe that's not loud enough, you can bring it up. Okay, so you don't have to just automate volume. You can automate anything that exists in the track. So it could be something about the synthesizer. It could be something in your smart controls, or you can add an effect. So we're going to add EQ, which is always good to add when you're at the end of your session and you're starting to mix and work with tracks, then adding EQ is a good effect. And when you look at the EQ, there's this analyzer mode typically defaults to being on and it shows you all the frequencies in this in the audible spectrum and about generally their relative volumes over time so I'll show you let's say we didn't like our our volume EQ you can always delete sorry our volume uh, automation you always delete um, a point by just selecting it and then hitting delete or selecting a group of points like I just did and Oops. Oh, there we go. And hey, come on. Delete. All right, so if I go into my EQ and I change the, um, the low end here, you can really hear a difference. And you could also automate that. So we could go to the channel EQ and find what we're looking for. And I think what we're looking for is this one, right? Okay, so there is our low shelf. And let's just bring it down here. Yeah, okay. So let's say we wanted to automate that over time. So it gives this sort of closed door effect okay so now we can automate that all right well that's one way to do it but it's also kind of inefficient so we're going to instead do it by hand while we're in the actual effect so we've changed this to latch and now when you play back the first time you touch something, it will record it when you're uh, in your automation. All right, and that way now you can sync it to something that you hear or sync it manually. And one thing, just remember, always turn it back to read. Otherwise, if you touch anything while you're listening to it, it will also record that automation. Okay, and you can still edit if you want to. You can go in and edit the dots, the points, if you really want to. Right? That's not out of the realm of possibility. You can select points and delete them. Um, it's, not, it's not forever, and if you don't like what you did, Right, remember, you can just select all the points and redo it. OK, 
Okay, so that's what latch does. Okay, so that's that. Now in the EQ view, we see something here that says analyzer post and pre. And the post view is basically trying to show you what your overall waveform or your overall spectrum looks like while you're applying the EQ. So you can see kind of the low end and high end start to fade out as you change the EQ. But if you did it in pre, it's showing you what the actual waveform looks like without any EQ applied. So you can see that low end is much louder. And when you bring it back in the post, it shows you how much you've reduced it by. So it gives you an idea of what the EQ is actually doing while you're applying it. You can also turn off the effect and listen to it without any EQ. And then you can go back or you can sometimes do a compare, right? If you want to listen to it on and off. Typically, I recommend when you're doing EQ, oops, that's on that one, that you just choose a sort of default preset based on essentially what you are um, working with. And then you can get a sense of how that sounds and then you can start to adjust accordingly. And using this analyzer really helps you kind of pinpoint where you should apply your EQ. So to give you different qualities. All right, now I also have a drum track. A drum track is a great place to apply something called compression. So I'm gonna choose a default, not the default, but a um, preset. And it's gonna change the skin based on the preset you choose. So really what we're looking for is the threshold. So that's basically the minimum, um, the minimum dynamic that the waveform has to achieve for any compression to actually happen. So you'll, you'll see that kind of in the output gain as we play. So let's go ahead and you can turn off automation for now. So if I, if I bring the threshold down and the ratio up, you should hear things starting to get much quieter. But if I bring up my makeup gain, what's going to happen is the softer sounds are going to get louder while the louder sounds get softer, and that's the dynamic compression there. So it really depends on what you're trying to achieve, but one thing you're going to notice is that as you start adding up all these tracks, whoops, you'll notice on your output something in the red, something above zero, and that means that you're, you're above the minimum Sorry, you're above the maximum level that Logic will allow you to mix at. So what could happen is you start to hear distortion, especially on the bounce. Um, and as it gets higher and higher, it'll start to distort more and more. So typically what we do is we just add an, uh, another effect under Dynamics called an Adaptive Limiter. And that's what I had on before. And I just basically switch it to something like Soft Limiter. And what this does is kind of protects from having multiple tracks kind of being overloaded. So you you want to start with just, you know, using automation to adjust volume. You may want it, you know, a drum track to be a little louder over time or, you know, get quieter for a moment. So like we may want the drums to just kind of drop down halfway through to a more reasonable level. Right? But we want our let's go back to volume. We may want our um, 
melodic line to get louder, right? Over time. And then the compressor on this track is going to help us control the overall dynamic level so that you can make certain things louder, th certain things softer. It's kind of like going to be an automatic mixer for you. So. Okay, so now we're not overdriving at all, and with help of changing the volume curves, um, adding on our limiter, and now our tracks will mix well when we bounce them. All right, so it's good to add some EQ and some sort of uh, compression to, especially drum tracks, but anything where the volume could be unpredictable. So drums are good, um, any sort of percussive sounds, good to add compression, but um, always just adding it maybe even a little bit to help control that overall volume is a good plan when you're using your tracks to end the mixing stage. Um, and then adding some sort of limiter on the stereo out track, and that would be the basically the last track that everything gets sent to. All right. Now um, we're going to do some basic export options. So you can, at any point, no matter how many different, let's just pretend we have lots of different regions in one track. Okay, that's because we have automation. It's going to ask you, do you want to move the automation? All right, so uh, I'm just going to do that again. Okay, don't move. Don't show this again. Okay. So let's say I just want to export this single region as an audio file. Let's say that I'm kind of working and I, I want to use this later in something else or add it to my loops library. So what we do is we right we right click by or control click and if you go to the export option you can do several things here you can export and add to the loop library you can export as an audio file and that's really what we want to do first or you can export it as a MIDI file and use it in another project so we'll export it as an audio file and it's going to give us some options and unless you've saved this, it's going to default to your logic folder. And we'll hit export. And now if we go to our home folder, under music, defaults to your logic folder, and, and there it is. So just that entire region, as they're called. You can also do it with the whole track. So you select the whole track, it selects all the regions in the track, and then we go to export, <coughs> and we can do select three regions as audio files or select one track as audio file. So if we do either of those, it should do the same thing, but when we select the one track, it allows you to trim the silence. So if there's anything else happening later in the, in the, um, in the song, it will just trim it to the track. You can also not have it do that, and you can have it basically export cycle range only or the file length to the project end. So that's basically for the whole length of the project. So we'll just trim the silence at the end, hit export, and it's gonna go to the very end of your project, but it should trim that silence for us. And here it is again. and it's playing these other regions that we created, and then it trims the silence. So it's an easy way to um, consolidate your audio. And if you wanted it to fit the entire length of your session, right, you do the same thing. Go to tr one track as audio, and you would do extend the file to the length of the project. And what this does is allows you to export all of your tracks at the same length, and then you can maybe import them in another software um, like Pro Tools to mix them. And so here we go, there's our second funk lead. And you see there's all that silence, a bunch of silence at the end. That's typically not what we want, but you may want that if you're doing any sort of um, mixing stage. All right, Oops. let me just get rid of these. Okay, 
You can do the same thing with audio files by right clicking and exporting as an audio file. Um, <clears throat> or you can do this with all your tracks. Let's say you want to consolidate all of your tracks or export all of your tracks as separate audio files. So you just say all tracks as audio files right? <clears throat> and choose one of these and it gives you an option to do things like bypass effects. So if you don't want it to write the effects to the file, then you do that. Otherwise, it'll include all effects that you've added to each track. And then uh, choose a folder. You can do a custom text, but it's basically going to do your track name. So if your tracks aren't labeled well, then it will be difficult to find them. So make sure you always label your tracks. And then you hit export, and it does its thing and exports them where you told it to. And there's each track. OK. Now say that you want to bounce the whole project and mix it together. So this is where everything that's coming out now, the stereo output, this is where you would bounce your project. And when you bounce your project, it gives you all sorts of options. Um, of types of files. So you can bounce it as PCM, uh, basically uncompressed. Tells you your start and end. So make sure that this is set to the proper end of your project. Okay. If you have effects that are time based, you might want to include your audio tail. Check these, make sure that all this looks good. Typically, if you're, you want to keep it in an uncompressed file format, uh, 24 bit is pretty good, and then whatever your sample rate you chose. Interleaved means it's either, uh, it's just one file, but it's two um, left and right uh, that are combined into one file. And you probably, sh you wouldn't need dithering unless you're going down in bit rate. And you hit OK, and now it bounces the entire project. Um, choose any sort of name. And now it's in your bounces folder and there's your whole project mixed together. Okay, and if you notice, because I told it the um, a much longer session length than I actually had music, it created the silence. So keep that in mind. I told it to end somewhere like way down here where there's nothing there. So it's going to bounce all that silence. It doesn't know not to do that unless you tell it to. Okay.